Russia has used its hypersonic Kinjal missile in Ukraine for the first time. Uh, this is one of several hypersonic missiles that Russia has. I've written about the Zurkhan missile, and I, I, in this article from 2020, I explain what the significance is of having hypersonic missiles. Now, for decades, the U.S. has been encircling and encroaching upon Russia's borders and territory, and they are installing all of these missile systems around Russia, and these include missile defense systems. So what the United States is actually trying to do is create a situation where the U.S. can attack Russia, and then when Russia retaliates with missile strikes, the U.S. will shoot them down. Well, now you have hypersonic missiles that travel anywhere between 5 to 12 times the speed of sound. They create a, a field of plasma ahead of them because they are traveling so quickly. It absorbs radio, including radar. And uh, they're so fast that when you try to hit it with an interceptor, the interceptor just can't can't get there fast enough. And if the missile somehow passes, it'll never catch up. The interceptor will never catch up to the Kinjal or the Zircon missile. Now, there is a possibility that if you have an advanced enough or an extensive enough missile defense system, you might be able to shoot one down. But the way these work is uh, the Kinjal is fired by warplanes. The Zircon is fired by naval vessels. What you would do is you would send a number of these up at the same time, and you will saturate the, the enemy's defense, air defense system, and you will guarantee that a, a, enough missiles will reach their target to destroy it. That is the whole point of this. So uh, an entire fleet could be wiped out by hypersonic missiles. Uh, a military base, these missiles can hit it and wipe them out. And it is a non-nuclear weapon, although they can be fitted with nuclear warheads as well. But it is a non-nuclear deterrent, it is a significant deterrent. And this is one of the reasons Russia fired this at Ukraine. Ukraine has air defense systems that are still operational. I don't know how significant they are or how important this target was, uh, but the missile completely circumvented whatever defenses there were and hit the target. So what does this mean for NATO? This means that anything NATO and the U.S. more specifically tries to do to more directly intervene in Ukraine, this is part of the price that they're going to have to pay to do that. This is a non-nuclear deterrent. This is something that Russia can do, uh, wiping any military base out that they want anywhere in Europe or sinking a fleet anywhere within the region. This is something that they can do uh, as retaliation for a direct military intervention by the US and its allies there in NATO. The real question is, will the United States receive this message uh, or is this a price they're willing to pay and i want to remind people that this is not about ukraine it's not even about russia it is ultimately about china the us and its its allies are working against the clock china is about to irreversibly surpass the united states and europe the china has a population larger than the g7 nations combined combined they will surpass the West without a doubt, all things being equal. If, if human beings are all equal and all the same and have the same potential, uh, people in China, they are getting a good education. They have a huge amount of industry there. They have access to plenty of resources. There is absolutely no way they're not going to surpass the West unless for some reason in your minds, you think that Chinese people are inferior, but they're not. And I think that they've proven that. The only way to stop this is to artificially hinder their development. And that is what we're seeing. We're seeing not just the encirclement and encroachment upon Russian territory, but they have been doing all along the same thing to China. It is part of a wider single strategy of encircling and containing both Russia and China. Uh, this process has driven both countries into a very close relationship. And when you are fighting a massive enemy, what you want to do is divide them and defeat them in detail. This is what the United States is doing. That is why it's so dangerous now what's going on in Ukraine. And we cannot count on the U.S. doing something rational, like trying to avoid a conventional war with Russia, because ultimately, if they cannot achieve what they're trying to do to Russia through Ukraine, uh, it will 
in, it will inhibit their ability to do what they're planning to do. Pretty much the same process to China through Taiwan, through the South China Sea, etc. So keep that in mind. This is what hypersonic missiles, if you're hearing this in the news, this is what they are. This is what they do. This is the purpose they were designed and built. Russia has them. China is said to have them. This is how missile warfare works. You don't just shoot one missile at a highly defended target. You shoot a barrage of them. You saturate their air defense system so that they simply don't have the, the time and the amount of missiles up in the sky to stop all of them. And the, a certain number of them are expected to get through. And that number is supposed to be enough to annihilate the target. And a hypersonic missile has many advantages. I mean, you could do this with just regular cruise missiles. Uh, you could you could saturate air defense with them, but you have to fire a lot of them. A hypersonic missile is traveling so quickly and is already so much more difficult to hit that a barrage of them almost ensures that whatever you're shooting at is going to be completely destroyed. So if you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing to my channel. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please look in the video description below for other places you can find my work. I've been recently completely deleted off of Twitter. Uh, for speaking up about Ukraine, my channel on YouTube can go at any moment. So please figure out where else you can find my work if you appreciate it and want, want to continue seeing it. I'm also on Telegram. I use Telegram every single day. I think it is better than Twitter and Facebook combined. I'm also on VK, which is Russia's version of Facebook. I'm on Weibo. The links to all of these are in the video description below. I also have the links to all of the articles that I referenced here uh, in this video, as well as Lee Barrett's video on hypersonic missiles. Actually, I saw him do a video on hypersonic missiles and about this use. Yeah, it was a pretty good video. I wanted to add a little bit to it. Uh, so please check that out. Also in the video description below are ways you can help support my work. This is uh, all that I do with my time and energy every single day. I had been doing industrial design to make a living and then this on the side, I've ended up committing full time to this. And it is people's support month to month or through one-time donations that makes this all possible. So uh, to everyone who is doing that, either through Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon or PayPal, thank you so much for that. Uh, and to everyone else who is helping share my work, sending kind words, uh, news tips, I could not do this without that, that help. So thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching.